What a long, strange, fun guy fuel trip it's been. As it turns out, the use of mushrooms in ancient cultures is just as divisive as eating a whole eighth by yourself before going to a family reunion. Some historians cite North African and European cave paintings from as early as 9000 BC that may depict magic mushrooms. And Aztec rituals used a hallucinogenic substance they called the flesh of the gods that very well could have been shrooms. So while we can assume ancient civilizations were tripping balls, we definitely know it spread to the United States in the 20th century thanks to an executive at J.P. Morgan Bank on vacation. 1957, R. Gordon Wasson, successful banker and major mushroom enthusiast, was traveling through Mexico learning about shrooms. In Oaxaca, he stumbled into a Mazatec ceremony conducted by a shaman featuring bona fide magic mushrooms. Now, Gordon claims he didn't partake, which is the same thing I told my parents after that string cheese incident show in 2007, but he did write about his experience in the wildly popular Life magazine with an article entitled Seeking the Magic Mushroom. Thus, a drug was named and inserted into the American consciousness. In the late 50s, in an effort to study the drug, American scientists enlisted the help of Swiss scientist Albert Hoffman, commonly known as the father of LSD, and probably a very fun guy to have parties. He was the first person to extract the psilocybin from the shrooms Gordon brought back from Oaxaca and designate it as the chemical reason mushrooms make you all zany brainy. In case you didn't know, when ingested, magic mushrooms take upwards of an hour to kick in. So if you don't feel it at first, don't take more. From there, the trip will come in waves, lasting about five to seven hours overall. You can expect euphoria and increased giggling, intense feelings of wonder and deep thinking, staring at your hands, a feeling like you're dying, or maybe you're already dead, and this is what purgatory is like, and you need to find Haley Joel Osment immediately because he's the only one who can help you cross over to the world of the living. So, essentially, intense paranoia. Anyway, shrooms are powerful, and you should mentally prepare for the potential of a bad trip. So, in the summer of 1960, counterculture and psychedelia icon Timothy Leary read the Life article on magic mushrooms and decided to head down to Mexico to try some magic mushrooms firsthand. There, he had a mushroom-taking experience that permanently altered his life, claiming that he learned more about his brain and self in the five hours being faced than he had through 15 years of academia. There you have it, kids. Drugs are more effective than school. Just kidding. When he returned to Harvard University, he created the Harvard Psilocybin Project, which conducted experiments based around psychedelic drugs, fueled by Leary's beliefs that drugs can lead to higher states of consciousness. Beat poet and notorious guy who looks a good time, Alan Ginsberg, heard they were giving out free drugs in Cambridge and linked up with Leary. He became such a fan of psychedelics, he told famous friends like writer Jack Kerouac and jazz musician Charles Mingus, who quickly spread the word and the fungus through the cool clicks of the 1960s. And people really bought into Leary's theories. Hey, that rhymes. In the mid-1960s, Leary got sacked from Harvard, but began distributing psychedelics throughout the country during the height of the hippie movement making sure the late 60s ran equally on free love and peace and a crap ton of psychedelic drugs. 1970, magic mushrooms are made illegal in the US. The Beatles, Beatles also, also break, break up. up. This, this is, is a very bad year. year. 1976, in a major breakthrough for shroom lovers, writer and ethnobotanist Terence McKenna releases his book Psilocybin, Magic Mushrooms Grower Guide, in which he states that growing your own shrooms is only slightly more complicated than canning or making jelly and delivers a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. Ever since then, shrooms have become a permanent fixture in the American hallucinogenic landscape, so let's fast forward a little bit. In 2018, researchers from John Hopkins University confirmed what many out there have suspected, that magic mushrooms can have some major medicinal uses, including helping people treat PTSD, depression, and anxiety, and even helping people quit smoking. In 2019, on the heels of this research and a larger push for cannabis legalization, Denver, Denver Colorado, Colorado decriminalizes magic mushroom use. Later in 2019, Oakland, California decriminalizes all psychedelic plants and fungi, and statewide efforts in Washington and Oregon are now underway to do the same. Brought to the U.S. by a banker, popularized by beat poets and 1960s hippies, now on the verge of maybe being Legal? Thank you, Magic Mushrooms, for making camping trips, Disney movies, and jam bands way, way, way more fun. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe to Thrillist YouTube channel for more great videos like this. Share it with your friends and write us in the comments about what you'd like us to cover next. We might actually do it. Who knows?